some of the most important people in my life remind me that feedback is a gift. Rock stars crave feedback. B and C players, not so much. They kind of dread feedback. But rock stars want to improve. They want to continually up their game. It's a burning need for them. But I'm not talking about the annual performance review. Unfortunately, that's too little, too late. And there's just too much time that passes between. So if you're like most managers, you probably dread putting these annual performance reviews together just as much as your staff dreads hearing them. So instead of the annual performance review, I've learned that there's two types of frequencies that work really well. The first is ongoing. There is just no substitute for prompt feedback, whether it's negative or not so much. But choose your moment. As time passes, your memory fades, and people are more likely to interpret the situation differently. So do it promptly after that learning opportunity. Then there's monthly feedback. And I think what works best is a sit-down discussion where you talk about the bigger picture. The way I do it is to make notes in advance. So I actually jot them down in my, in my phone, and I think about the two or three key items that tend to come up often. I don't make a laundry list to avoid that temptation. No one can absorb it. But just the two or three key things that are opportunities for improvement. It's actually a lot more pleasurable and satisfying than that horrible annual performance review. And I promise you'll dread it less, they'll dread it less. So how to do it? Again, plan your messages in advance and pick your moment. Think about the right time and the right place. Always in private, never give feedback in public. As I've built companies, I've learned to separate performance discussions from compensation conversations. Once they're mixed up together, and I talk about compensation, that's all they hear. They don't hear the feedback, the performance review. So I would encourage you to consider separating these two and do them on staggered timeframes. When it comes to rock stars, I use the Socratic method and I ask, how do you think it went? What do you think went well or not so well? How do you think that meeting went? And that Socratic method actually tells you a lot about whether the rock star's expectations are realistic. What I find is that they're usually far harder on themselves than I would ever be. So instead of a very difficult, awkward discussion, it's actually a collaborative problem-solving session. Great, how can we do better next time? So whether you're working with a sales rep, how do you think that meeting went? Or you launch a new product with your developers, how did we do on this particular product launch? You wanna coach the team on what excellence looks like. That's the standard that they aspire to, but you have to show them what that looks like. And you also have to share the blame if you haven't made it clear. In these coaching sessions, it's so useful to focus on future performance more than the past. So tie their performance to the skills that are needed in their next career move. And that actually makes them look forward to feedback instead of dreading it. So just to recap, compensation, and this time we talked about candid coaching, but I have one more C for you, and we're gonna talk about that in our final lesson.